Hello and welcome once again to Madison Story Slam. That's the name of this podcast. Sometimes I get confused because I do host three other podcasts and uh, I'm recording this one right after a different one I did. So welcome to Madison Story Slam, the show where we hear great stories. Uh, you know, we do our live events at the Wilmar Center and people come and tell stories based on a theme. And our next Wilmar Center event is October 20th. That's Saturday, October 20th. The theme is Under Pressure. And as always in October, we have a costume contest that night. And the theme for the costume contest is classic rock. So come dressed as your favorite classic rock artist, band, group, whatever. And the way you enter the contest is you come in costume, but then you have to also tell a story while in costume. And the judges for that night are myself. Uh, so if you want to slip me a 20, uh, and then also my wife, Ashley, is going to be helping to judge. Last year, the prize for the contest winner, uh, it was over. It was worth over $400. It included concert tickets, uh, you know, a gift card for a restaurant, a couple's massage, lots of great stuff in that prize packet last year. We are working on the prize packet this year. It's going to be great, I promise you. So come out on October 20th for Story Slam Under Pressure in costume. Uh, you know, sometimes, most of the time we do episodes where it's recordings from our live story slams, but every now and then we have an episode where I bring somebody on who I find interesting, maybe it's somebody local, maybe it's not somebody local, maybe it's somebody who used to be local but isn't local anymore, but is local now because they come back. I'm losing count. How about you? Um, but today we have one of those. Before I get to that, I just want to take care of a little bit of business. As you know, this podcast is sponsored by Ale Asylum. It's always sponsored by Ale Asylum, and that is awesome. They are so good to us, and uh, we're grateful for them. They always give us great beer for the Story Slam events. And um, we have an uh, this podcast and every podcast. We also have another po uh, sponsor for the podcast today. It is Resolution Health Collaborative here in Madison, Wisconsin. They're an established massage therapy clinic in downtown Madison, and they specialize in custom massages. Uh, they just changed locations. They are now at 345 West Washington Avenue as Resolution Health Collaborative. There's a bunch of great stuff in there. You can call them at 608-443-7048. And you, if you mention Madison Story Slam, you get a discount on your first appointment. So call them today and get that scheduled. You can also visit resolutionmassage.com to do more. Thank you, Ale Asylum, and thank you, Resolution, for sponsoring this show and every show. We really appreciate it. All right, on today's show, it's my Uncle Garth, who's the funniest guy I know, and he's from Madison. So let's get to it. A lot of pressure. <laughs> That's not Can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah. The prize, the couple's massage? Yeah. Is that you and Ashley who give that massage? Is that why it's called a couple that's actually massage? What, that's actually what we mean by couple massage. It's not for two people. It's from two people. Oh, and it's me and Ashley. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, um, sh shirts are optional for the me. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say that about my wife. <laughs> I was going to say, how far is this going? <laughs> well, uh, you know, we, we come from a family uh, that sometimes do take things a little too far. Uh, way too far. And you are somebody who is probably like the king of that in our family. The farthest. The f you're yeah. the furthest. Yes. Furthest. The um, farthest. But uh, explain for my listeners who you are, that kind of stuff. Anything you want to plug and all that good stuff. My name is Garth Heckman. Hold on one second. I will say this. Uh, my listeners know this, that I come from a religious family of pastors. My My grandfather was a pastor. Uh, I have uncles and aunts who are pastors. My dad's a pastor. We try not to get too much into religion on this, but we're, we also don't shy away from it. But it's not a Jesus-focused podcast. But we're probably going to talk about Jesus a little bit on this podcast because, Garth, what are you? I'm a Jesus freak. <laughs> but I don't like religion. Um, so if you don't like religion, uh, hats off to you. So, Yeah. But anyway, introduce okay. yourself. My name is Garth stuff. Heckman. I grew up in Madison from about the age of three and a half. I uh, went to Sherman uh, Middle School and grade school and went to Madison East. Go Pergolders. And if That's anyone can tell me what a Pergolder <laughs> is, to this day, no one still really knows. It's a hybrid. Wait, it, it's because they're, is it because they're purple and gold? Yes. And so they just took those two things and. And it's like a cat slash badger. But, with is, a, but is it an actual animal called a Pergold? No, it's just called a Pergolder. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's like a hybrid of it's a it's a genome mistake is basically what it is. It's, yeah. Anyway, yeah, and I grew up here. Then I went off to I got married at nineteen and went off to college, quite a few different places. And now I'm residing in Minnesota, uh, but I'm back for the weekend. So you live in you 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 were you born in Madison? I forget. No, I was actually born up in Boston, northern Minnesota. Yeah. So you were born in Viking territory, grew up in Packer territory, love the Bears, and now living in Viking territory. Yes, it's I'm a confused individual. Yeah. Very. Yeah. So I hate that you like the Bears. I just uh, That's okay. It's okay. You'll get over it. As soon as <laughs> Packers lose Rodgers, you you will get over it. Yeah. So well, um so you came down today cuz you're you're starting a podcast or you, you already have a podcast called Scatterbrain. Yeah. Is that what it's called? It's, it's scatter- called Scatterbrain. I've I've had to put it on hold because I'm I'm kind of the spin the plate analogy. Uh I'm spinning a whole china shop right now sure. in my life. But I am getting ready to launch a new podcast for men called The David Alliance. Okay. So, and what's that about? That's uh, for men ages 35 to 60. The biggest issue in men's lives right now is loneliness. And so we're going to tackle all topics that men are afraid to talk about and maybe have no one to talk about. Like fallopian tubes. Yes. I'm afraid to talk about fallopian tubes. tubes. (laughs) That's a whole other story, man. (laughs) Uh, But anyway. You do have a fallopian tube tube story. We're going to get into that. Okay. So anyway, it's it's for men who feel like they are repeating the same year over and over again, and it's built into a whole a whole really. It's going to be a monthly subscription, not the podcast, but the, yeah. the whole idea behind what we're trying to do, and it's to help men. You know, the biggest thing I hear from men as they get older is they feel like they repeat the same year over and over again. No better equipped emotionally, mentally, socially, spiritually, physically, and so we're going to try to tackle all of those topics. Cool, and help men bust out of that rut. Awesome. And they can find stuff like that at the davidalliance.com. Dot com. Yep. Cool. And it's not fully operational yet. Right now it's kind of a landing page. It's a like landing page. The website should actually be up next week, but okay. the, w- the landing page is up and you can see the video and hear more what of it what it's about. Very cool. Um so what do you say we talk about some stories that you might have? Okay. Um I will read to you the last couple of themes that we've had at uh, our Story Slam events, and maybe okay. that might inspire some things. You know, normally I, in interview episodes, like I'll interview somebody and like ask questions, but when you're, so, I'm so familiar with you, it's kind of like I'm at a loss as to what to ask and talk to you about because it's all interesting to me, but then it kind of gets jumbled. But so some of our last themes uh, have been lost, redemption. Child's Play, uh, Big, uh, uh, man, there's so many here. <laughs> there Will Be Blood. I'm sure you've got some good blood stories. Mm-hmm. Liar, Liar. Whatever you got. I, hit me with a story here. Child's Play pops to the yeah. top. And now, listeners, real quick, uh, Garth is one of the best storytellers I've oh, ever known. Careful, I mean, you, careful. you really are. You're... I'm glad that we are filming video and listeners, we do have video. So if you're listening to this and you want to see us and see Garth telling a story, because to see you tell a story is great. You're very emotive and your facial expressions. If you want to see that, visit uh, facebook.com slash Madison Story Slam. The link to the YouTube video will be up there. So Garth, you said child's play is child's play. So I have to share the back end before I share the story. On my 21st birthday, I'm sitting on the deck of my parents' house. We're going to celebrate with some steaks and a birthday cake. And my father, now I've been married two years, and I'm fully mature and know everything at the age of 21. So (laughs) my dad, in this conversation, says, so looking back on your life, what do you think is probably the biggest mistake you ever made? And we're a family that asks questions like that. Sometimes they're fun, some more intuitive. And I said, well, I said... And I've got a lot, I've got a pretty colored past. I said, well, do you remember the department store? Oh, back I'm behind so glad house? you're telling this story. <laughs> and he said, what department store? And I named it. And I'm sure the Statue of Limitations. I was going to say, let's check out. the Statue of Limitations. But there was a department store behind our house. I lived on the west side. And <laughs> he said, yes. I said the name. He goes, yeah. I go, do you remember the day it burned down? <laughs> 
he puts his hands over his ears and starts going, la, 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 la. I, I don't want to know. know. I don't want to know. <laughs> and so my mom was like, well, I want to know. And my dad literally. Isn't that so funny about grandma? Is like oh. she's always oh, the one yeah. that's like, yeah. like she's disappointed, but she's like, but right. come on, give me the details. Right. <laughs> and in a in a sick way, kind of proud. Yes. Like 100%. That was my grandson yeah. who burned it to the ground. <laughs> well, it was her son. <laughs> yeah, was son, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Trying to protect her, Adam. <laughs> so my dad literally goes into the house and doesn't want to hear it. Yeah. And my mom's sitting there going, no. I want to know. I want to know. So story behind that is I loved matches. I love fire. I still do. And I've always grown up making bombs. A whole nother story. But on this particular day, I was in this department store and I was, I would go down there and they had a huge pet section and which, what department store today has <laughs> going to get some wool light, uh, some hangers and a dog. Yeah. And so I go down there and Wait, there was, were animals in this department yeah, store. There was a pets, <gasps> pet shop in this. Yeah. I just thought you meant like accessories for your pets. No, I, mean, I didn't like, there were ever animals. know about this part of the story. This is why it's really still, it still bothers me because I'm an animal lover, but I would go down there and, and you know, watch the pets and every now and then the cages would be kind of semi open. You could pet them. And I went walking in, and right as I went walking in, there was a book of matches. Like, <laughs> sweet. I love it matches. It was just like the, the devil on your shoulder. It was like, oh, yeah. Bling. Yeah. And so with no ill intent whatsoever, seriously, I was walking around the store with these matches in my hand looking at stuff. And I learned how to light a match and dab it to my tongue and put it out, which was super cool. I like that you learned how to do that. Yes. Isn't it just you oh. did it once? <laughs> <laughs> and at, at one point, I got so good, I could flick the match up into the air. It, it would light, and then I'd catch it on my tongue, which, cool points, extra five. My brother and I used to lay matches on the on the cardboard strip or the striking right. strip, whatever, and we'd flick them at each other. Yeah. And so they'd be flaming. Yeah. Yeah. What kid hasn't done that? Yeah. What kid hasn't burned a store to the ground? Children, if you're listening, don't do these things. Don't, don't, don't. So I'm walking around the store, and I'm lighting a match, and I'm sticking it on my tongue because I'm super cool. Honest to God, not thinking anything bad could happen. And so I get a match out. I've only done it like to four or five matches. It's a full b book of matches. And I light the match and I'm going to stick it to my tongue. And I hear someone coming around the corner because we're right in the store. I'm not even really trying to hide. Yeah. And I hear this woman say something. At first, I thought she was catching me, like she was going to be mad at me. And I. Because you're a kid with matches. Right, you're playing with right. matches. Yeah. And she wasn't talking to me at all, but she startled me. And as I struck the match, I kind of went like this, and I lit, and all, lit the matches the on thing. fire. And I panicked and I threw it into the circular stand that had all these coats a rack of clothes. Yeah. yeah. So it's circular, and I just threw it in there, and then I just <sighs> walked out of the store. And I was like, ooh. She almost caught me with the matches. D walked out, didn't Phew. know. Got off scotch free. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, 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 <laughs> no witnesses. consequences. This is one of those days when you we are so thankful that cell phones did not exist. Yeah. Or security cameras. And yes. And so, well, I burned those, so it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, <laughs> Tapes are destroyed. So I went home, and about, I don't know, 45 minutes later, a neighbor comes to our house and said, Did you hear what happened to. ABC department store. And my mom's like, no, she goes, it's on fire. A huge fire. Somebody started the coat section on fire and it spread throughout the store. And so my mom's like, Oh, we should go see. So we get in the car. And I'm like, so and scared like, to death. My handiwork. Ugh. I get to view it. I'm just sweating. I'm like, she knows I did this. That's yeah. why she's taking me down there. You're like, you must run through this store. That would be like a punishment. grandma thing. Like yeah. you have to watch this. Yeah. You did this. Now you watch. And now the worst part though, is we get down there. And she says the most god awful thing I could have heard. Oh, did she say? Just think of the animals. Yes. Oh, I, I oh. honestly, I never knew that part. Yeah, and, and I was so like, now I'm like, oh, oh no, the animals. And so that was something I have lived with for a long time. One of the few things that I truly regret, regret because of the animals. I mean, stores burn down all the time. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I didn't, I didn't mean to. I mean, there are other stores I've burned down I, I, that I meant to burn down, but that one I didn't. Um, I love I love that line because it could be taken as a threat as you're walking through a store yes. talking to a manager. You know, stores burn down all the time. Yeah. <laughs> nice coat rack. Anyway, I'd like a discount. Uh, but man, so, yeah, that was that was uh, the, the animals. That that's that's rough. But you know, I had always, for some reason, I remember that story as you were in the coat rack 
playing with matches no. and something accidentally lit on fire no. and you were just like, well, getting out of here. But no, in, in fact, I want to I wanna preface this by saying last week, my golden retriever, who's 13 years old, had a stroke. And I was on the floor crying over that dog, praying for that dog. I mean, I, when I have an animal pass away, it's a part of the family. So it's still really, really, really haunting. Do you me. ever think that when your animals pass away, it's God's way of going... His punishment. Shouldn't have lit that fire. <laughs> yeah, otherwise they'd probably live forever. So yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, so that, that'd be a child's play story. Well, you know, part of what we like to do at Madison Story Slam is, so we, what we our motto is building community through storytelling. And I wonder, are there lessons to take away from that? Like, I mean, obviously don't, don't play with matches, but... I don't know. Has that shaped you in any way in, in your walk today? It I, is only shaped, well, not only, but probably the most. As I look back at, at myself as a kid, I'll reflect on myself, then my own boys. What I appreciated about my parents is they knew I was a risk taker growing up. Yeah. So rather than growing up and smoking and drinking and having sex and doing all the things that high school kids did in the day, they gave me... In the day. They're it, still doing those yeah, things. Apparently they are. <laughs> uh, uh, they had, they had the, the insight to give me plenty of opportunities to have safe, if you might call that, risky behavior. <laughs> so my dad would take me to Devil's Lake, and we'd rock climb. Sure. He would let me do some things that were pretty crazy uh, for my age, but he would let me. We did barefoot water skiing. We did rappelling. We did all kinds of things that really kind of pushed it to the limit. I, I skateboarded. Uh, one of my favorite stories is jumping the Capitol steps because I, I looked like hamburger by the time I nailed it, but I did. I came home. And my parents, you know, they were upset that I was all bloody and hurt, but they're like, you know what? He's not smoking. He's not drinking. So, and in hindsight, I look at that when I had my boys. There are dumb things that they did with no ill intent. It was just dumb. Yeah. And I think back, you know, I lit a store on fire. I didn't mean to. It was just stupid. It was an accident. I'm not going to overreact. We'll, we'll help them learn from it, but I'm not going to, you know, the world didn't burn down, uh, nor when they made mistakes, I didn't, you know, freak out. So yeah, it's, it, it helps a little. I, yeah, it's interesting how uh, the mistakes we make as children, I don't have kids yet, but I assume this is how it is. The mistakes that we made as children, they do inform our own parenting because like when your kids do something that is really stupid, you're like... Well, there was that one time that that, that I murdered animals. Right. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry for putting yeah. that in your face, but no. Um, but yeah, so I, th I think that's interesting. Uh, that is probably one of my favorite favorite stories of me uh, murdering animals. <laughs> well, welcome to it, Evoke. It does. This is an Evoke <laughs> or uh, <laughs> Madison Story. Madison Slam. Story Slam. Sorry, yeah, we just recorded Evoke. It's another podcast with you. Um, I. Uh, I, I didn't know about the animals, so it does kind of uh, shift a little bit what I uh, <laughs> what I think about it. Um, but um, any other stories? Anything else come to mind of, of child's play? No, just of anything, man. We're just here talking, having a good time. Uh, well, you well, know, let me tell you a story quick. Tell me a story. Um, I've told this at Story Slam before. I uh, set my neighbor's house on fire one time. When I was 12 years old, an older high school friend uh, gave me a, bought, went, took me to Walmart uh, and bought me a Zippo lighter. Because like you, I loved matches. I love fire lighters. That's I a always good wanted friend. a Zippo. Oh, yeah. Mark Olson is his name. He's I know Mark oh, Olson. Oh, yes, you do. Yeah. And um, I, uh, he bought me the lighter, and I took it home. And it was, I remember it was black with a red etching around it. And that sound, you know, that, yeah. that perfect Zippo sound, it was so great. And my neighbor, Ben, and I, uh, we're, we were best friends. And he was kind of the kid that would convince me to do things that I shouldn't do. And, and so I was like, look at this awesome lighter. And he's like, oh, I've got a great idea. Let's go outside. And in their house, they had like a, a covered porch, but it was open air covered porch, but it had a roof over it. It had two side walls, and then the other two were open. And we, we, it was connected right to his kitchen and, and the garage. And we went into the garage and got a gas can uh, and a glass mason jar and a piece of chalk. And a little plastic pan. And Ben filled up the plastic pan full of gasoline. He then filled up the mason jar full of glass gasoline. And then uh, just set the gas can to the side. And then he took the piece of chalk and, and just let it sit in the gas for a while. 
and we're talking and, and then you know two minutes later he pulls out this piece of chalk and he goes light this i don't know what we thought was going to happen like if if the gasoline would and the fire would like change the chalk in some way <laughs> but i'm like well yeah obviously i'm going to light this so i light it and ben is holding it over the pan of gasoline and he's holding the tr- the gasoline soaked chalk so when i light it it burns him and he immediately drops, drops it, it into the pan of gasoline and chaos ensues because then ben takes the, to try and put out the fire takes the pan of gasoline and and flips it so then gas burning gasoline spreads around everything and we're like running in circles knock over the mason jar that's full of gasoline even bigger it's surrounding the can of gasoline <laughs> It's raining outside, but again, the porch is covered. So I run to the end of the house and grab the hose. And I'm like, I turn it on. I'm like yanking it and and getting it as far as I could, but it's snagged. And so I'm standing like 20 feet away trying to spray. And uh, his his dad's name is John. And John comes, he just sticks his head out the back porch or the back deck. So he can't see the fire. And he goes, is the hose on? And I was like, yeah, it is. And he goes, it's raining. Turn the hose off. And I was like, okay. So I go and I turn... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I turn the hose off and he's still got his head poked out and you can hear fire, you know, that distinct right. fire sound. And he goes, is there a fire out here? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, turn the hose on. <laughs> so, so then I ran back and turned the hose on. And uh, Ben at this point is rolling around in the fire because stop, drop and roll. But it's like, Ben, that's if you're on fire. <laughs> you, you don't put out a gasoline fire by rolling in it. There's always a slow kid. <laughs> and uh, so John gets the fire put out, and he's like, I think you should go home. And I was like, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> and I went in, I reeked like gasoline. And I went inside and went straight to the downstairs where we had a shower and stripped my clothes, put them in the laundry, got in the shower, whatever. And a whole time in the shower, I'm like, you know what? I'm fine. Ben's not going to rat me out. He's going to take the blame. He's strong. He, he yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I, as soon as I shut off the shower, I hear the steps from upstairs, just like stomping steps and then stopping at the top of the stairs. And I'm like, and then I just hear my dad say, Adam. And I was like, Ben's so weak. He gave me up. He's a weak man. And then sure enough, he's like, did you just start the Shoopy's house on fire? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. Only thing that happened to me, they took my Zippo away for a day, and I had to clean my room that night. I mean, that was that was my whole punishment. <laughs> like, okay. I think Ben was grounded for like two weeks. But yeah. Well, so. as he should be for giving you up. <laughs> should have been grounded for three weeks. That's, that's right. That's what right. What a friend is that? So we have something in common. We have, you know, been influenced to start things on fire. I have a good friend of mine, David. I don't know. Can we give last names on here? I prefer not to. Okay. David Smith. Uh, Jones is what we call him. He and I kind of did the same thing. We were sophomores, juniors in high school, up at the cottage. They have those big old huge milk jugs. Yeah. Like, I don't know if people know what a milk jug actually was. It's like the giant pail they used to put all the milk into and carry two handles. We filled that up with half a tank of gas. Yeah. And started shooting matches, like we were just talking about, into that can. And it wouldn't go off. So we took like a, a stick and wrapped a piece of cloth around it lit on fire and i kind of ran by it and threw it in there and we put all kinds of things that were flammable in there and nothing yeah so i go and i get this big it's actually an old rake the rake head it fell off so it's just a big stick and i go over there and i kind of stir it a little and i go i don't know what's i don't know why it's nothing's going on i don't know why it's burning and then I looked down in it, and as I looked down in it, imagine the jet engine of a, of a plane. <laughs> burns my eyebrows off, singed my little Hispanic mustache that I'd had, burns all the hair on the front of my head. So next smartest thing is we go into the cottage, yeah. and David shaves my head, because you could tell I'd burned all my hair, so he just shaves it. We go home. <laughs> we were supposed to be at school anyway, but... I mean, the good thing about Madison East is you didn't have to go to class to graduate. The Pergold. Yes. And my mom and dad are like, what did you do to your hair? And, and I'm panicking thinking they can tell I burned it. And I go, I just, I'm super hot. You know, they're like, in October? You're super hot in October in, in Wisconsin? Yeah. I was like, yeah, so I shaved my head. I had David <laughs> shave my head. And they're like, you know, they weren't mad. They were just like, that's the dumbest that's thing really in the weird. world. really <laughs> weird. You look horrible. I'm like, yeah, well, everyone's doing it. <laughs> Went upstairs. Everybody's doing it. Went upstairs. 
Tom told, you know, called David, told him. And then as we're talking, I realize we never put the milk can back. Oh. It's still sitting in the yard with who knows. Now, somebody put it back and they didn't check what was in there, but stupidity. Yes. Stupid. I should have been dead multiple times. That was one of them. But um, I'm, I know that you uh, spent quite a while or not i don't know how long actually i'm not going to assume how long it was uh but you delivered flowers in chicago and often were funeral homes and things like that i wonder if you have stories about that i have a lot of stories about that there's probably one of my most favorite stories because it it caught even me off guard was uh it was matt's funeral home m-a-t-z check it up on the web they're probably still around and i Many times, taking flowers to the funeral home, you it was multiple, you know, you have five or six sprays. Especially in, in a, a big city like yeah, that. You're yeah. probably delivering for multiple funerals at a time. Yeah. And so you learn quickly as a, someone who's delivering flowers how, how to open up doors with your feet and your elbows because you usually try to carry in as many as possible. This particular day, it's January, Chicago. It's already dark by 5 o'clock. And, yeah. And this is a delivery that's got to be made, so I'm out there, 5.30, making this delivery. Pull up in the back, because that's typically where you deliver them. And this is the, when you're delivering so frequently, it's kind of like, you don't knock, you don't wait for something. No, you just they go don't in, expect right? you to. You yeah. just, the back doors, you just walk okay. in, and, yeah. and you can see some crazy things when you walk in, too. But So this particular day, I've got two sprays in each hand, and uh, the door, I know how to stick my foot up under the handle. And pull it open real quick to get my foot in. And then I turn as I'm opening it with my foot and I back in so that I can get the flowers through without the door <laughs> shutting on them. And so then as I'm turning around, the door shuts behind me and the back room, all the lights are off. Yeah. It's a smaller back room. I've been in there a hundred times, so I kind of know where, where I should go. And I turn and start to walk and I hit something in my waist. And so I, I put the spray down. Um the flower arrangement down i'm trying to put it down on top of this to f- see what it is and it's a person's face <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and i realized then this is an open casket they put back here for something but here's what was so funny i panicked because i felt like i in imp- uh, in position them i was like i go i'm, oh, sorry. I'm sorry i'm sorry i didn't mean to touch your face and i'm waiting for them to reply and i'm, and I'm like i didn't mean to I'm, I'm sorry i didn't mean to and then i realized i'm talking to a dead person and then it's even worse it's like oh <laughs> I'm talking to a dead, I touched a dead person, you know? So then, so then I go around the back, I figure out where I'm at, I flip on a light, and I, I put these two sprays on top of this giant trash can. It's the kind that you usually see out in the back. Uh, I set them there, and I make some noise, and I'm already kind of freaked out. And I'm mm-hmm. thinking, I don't know if anybody's even here. So then as I'm standing there after that, the mortician comes out with these long gloves on, all the way past his elbows. I don't know if it was blood or what, but it was dark fluid all over his arms. And he comes around the corner, right? I mean, right from where the trash can's at. He just comes out of this door and he's like, what's up? Like, and I mean, (laughs) scared. I'm, I'm, I poop my pants. I'm at that point. I'm like, oh. And so then the first thing that comes out of my mouth is, I touched a dead person. I didn't mean to. I put it, I put my hand on their face. And he's like, yeah, okay. It's all right, man. You know, you know, and he's holding his hands up like this, like, you know, cause he's got stuff dripping off. And then I go, I got to go. And he's like, okay. So then I jump in the van. I still have to bring in more flowers. Yeah. No, I go back. I go back to Bussies. I get there and I'm like, yeah, they were close. Couldn't deliver them. The door's locked. Like, yeah. And so I was like, oh, well, we'll take it early tomorrow morning then. I'm like, yeah, okay. I was like, go home and, you know, have the sweats the rest of the night. All right. Take a cold shower. <laughs> yeah. That, like, I, I delivered for flowers uh, here in Madison. I never had to go to a funeral home, but, like, I, I knew that story. Uh, but every time I would deliver flowers, I, I would think of that and just be like, man, I hope I don't touch a dead body today during my uh, work. Bannockburn. What? Uh, what? Bannockburn is a suburb of Chicago. Okay. Huge, like three dozen roses. Okay. Beautifully decorated. And I go up to this very nice house, ring the doorbell. Woman comes. You always have to get a signature. And uh, she opens the door and really kind of like, how can I help you? I'm like, um, here to deliver flowers for what, Mrs. Smith. And she goes, oh. And then she goes, well, who are they from? And I go, uh, I'm not sure. I don't have any record of that. She goes, is there a card with them? And I go, yeah, I think there is. And I pull, yeah, there's a card. And she goes, read who it's from. <laughs> and I go, okay. So I reach it. And I re- I'll never forget the guy's name is Richard. 
So I read, and I was like, I'm so sorry for the way I hurt you, blah, 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 Richard. And she goes, I don't want them. And I go, okay. Um, I said, I just need you to sign here that, you know, I at least stopped. Attempted. And, yeah. And she goes, okay. So she signs, and I start to walk away. And she goes, wait a second. What do you do with those flowers? I go, we just take them back to the shop. Will he know that I didn't take them? I go, yeah. I mean, we have to call and say that, you know, you didn't accept the delivery. And she goes, okay, well, give them back to me for a second. And I'm like, oh. Okay, so I give them back to her, and she, on the railing of her porch, just beats the ever-living stuffing out of her. <laughs> Roses are flying everywhere, and then she hands them back to me, and she goes, make sure you tell them that's what I did with them. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll tell Richard that you, you know, beat the crap out of That you're a crazy woman. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I don't know what happened, but Richard ain't happening anymore. So, yeah. uh, but yeah, some crazy stuff. That is crazy. All right. Well, I know you got to get going here real quick, but one last story that I, or it's a, it's a multitude of stories that maybe we could end on. Sure. Uh, you've been through a lot in your life. Uh, as a young man, you uh, had some neck injuries. You've been through cancer many times. And I think those are the kinds of stories that we as as people can learn a lot from. You know, the, the kind of stories where you're facing adversity and you're seeing yourself through it. So I wonder if you could kind of take all of that and make it kind of one story. I know that's sure. kind of a lot of pressure, but. No, uh you know, I've had colon cancer, and then it spread throughout my lymph system. And then during that time, I got C. diff, which is a terrible disease, then liver cancer, and then from all of that, a brain tumor. So taking all that into the scope, probably it, it's a story, but I hope it brings hope because that's really what it speaks to me. I am, as we said early on, I'm a Chicago Bears fan. Boo. But I am a huge, massive Jay Cutler fan my favorite Chicago Bears player ever. And now why people, he's so yes, bad. Exactly. Why? Exactly. That's the point of the story. All right. So going through my, <clears throat> going through my first cancer, there was a point of chemo. The first uh, round of chemo was eight months long. And I did almost a total of 16 months total, but this first round, eight months, my son, who's also a Chicago Bears fan, he had to move back home. He was going to school locally, about mm -hmm. 45 minutes away. Moved back home to be able to help my, my wife with all the things I couldn't do. Especially my type of chemotherapy, I couldn't be exposed to cold at all. And I, I started chemo. In, Great place to live. Yeah. And started chemo in October and you know had to go through May. So he's a Bears fan. I'm a Bears fan. But anyway, this particular time, I, um, I get up in the morning and it's one of those mornings where I don't want to go through this anymore. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to tell my wife I don't want to do chemotherapy anymore. I don't care if I die. There's nothing worth living for. It's just, I just don't care. And your chemo already kind of kills you anyway. You yeah. Know, you're emotionless. You're flat. You're basically like a zombie. So, and, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm standing in the kitchen and my son's home upstairs. My wife's upstairs. I'm standing on the main level in the kitchen and I'm, Literally mad because I have to put gloves on to get milk out of the fridge to heat it up so I can drink it. And I'm thinking, yep, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do this anymore. Hmm. I, I basically, I give up. And SportsCenter is on the TV that's sitting on the refrigerator. And breaking news, the Chicago Bears, who had just been to the Super Bowl a few years earlier, uh, had just traded for Jay Cutler, who was lighting it up for the Broncos. He was killing it. And uh, the guy came on and said, this is going to put the Bears, you know, strong in their division. They have great outlook. And I got so excited, I started screaming. Because up to that point, we'd had Rex Grossman, which, anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a hater, but, you know, it got us nowhere. It got us to the Super Bowl, but not because of him, because of our defense. Story is, I start screaming. So, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And they think I fell because I was so weak. My wife's screaming, go downstairs. So my son runs downstairs. And he's like, what, what, what? He's thinking, again, like, what, what did you hurt? Something's what did wrong, you do? yeah. And I said, we got Jay Cutler. And he goes, like, what? I go, we got Jay Cutler. And he goes, who got Jay? I go, the Bears. The Bears got Jay Cutler. I said, we're going to the Super Bowl. And he picks me up, and he's just as excited as me. He's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I mean, it's like, I, I remember thinking right then and there, i got to stay alive. I've got to stay alive for the Bears. I'm, they're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> for the Bears. I'm serious. I mean, I got you. I get it. One little glimmer of hope. I'm like, uh, and I'm a sports fanatic anywhere. And I'm like, that. And I remember going downstairs in my office then and just 
after the whole thing kind of blows over, I'm just kind of laughing going, the Bears? Jay Cutler? That's, you know, my <laughs> what I'm going to hang on to, but I'm, I'll take yeah. whatever I can get. Because in those moments, wherever you can find hope, find it and hang on to it and smother it. And so, you know, Jay Cutler did not turn out the way I hoped to, but he really gave me a second lease on life. He gave me that hope. That's really cool. And so I'm, I'm forever It's, like, it's kind of like uh, climbing up a rock face, you know, like climbing up a cliff and you're free climbing and you, you're reaching and you're looking for holds and stuff. And at a certain point, I'm sure people get to that point where they're like, I just can't do this anymore. Like I, I'm not finding the holds that I need and they're, they're still reaching right. and grasping. And they finally, they find that one thing that it's the perfect hold. And they're like, you know what? I can do this. I, I found it and I can keep going. That's what I thought of when you when you were talking right. about that. So I think that's really cool. I feel good about this this uh, uh, episode. I like it. I like it. Yeah, we had some good f- funny stories and some good the good serious story at the end. So I think that's really good. Um, listeners, this isn't going to be the typical ending. You're not going to hear the outro music. It's just going to be me talking. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to my uncle Garth Heckman, who you can find at the David dot com. Uh, anywhere else that you'd like people to find you? You know what? I have my website, GarthHeckman.com. Yeah. But I was told last night it's been hacked, and if you go there, you could win a free prize. Oh. So uh, I oh, don't know what great. that's about. That's great. Yeah. But uh, uh, I had, I Sign told my, me up for that one. Yeah, I told my web guy early this morning, uh, you need to get on that. I yeah. don't know what's going on. So Yeah, absolutely. So just go to thedavidalliance.com. Check out his uh, current podcast called Scatterbrain. There's a, a handful of episodes. About 15. About 15 episodes. And it's an entrepreneurship podcast. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's a good listen. Um, thank you for being on. I love you so much. I love you. Um, listeners, again, October 20th, Saturday, October 20th at the Wilmar Center. It's Story Slam Under Pressure. Uh, you can sign up early online on Facebook to tell a story. Come in costume, and you will. if you tell a story in costume, you'll be entered in the costume contest to win a prize. Doors open at 6. Stories start at 7. And guys, normally I end every episode by saying that I love you, but on this episode, I want to end it by saying, just remember, department stores burn down all the time. 